like to call the Tuesday, January 24th, 2023 Housing and Redevelopment Authority meeting to order. The, f the first item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Are there any additions, changes, questions to the agenda? Hearing none, I would uh, ask for a uh, motion to approve the agenda for Tuesday, January 24th, 2023 meeting. I motion to approve the agenda okay. for this meeting. A second? Second the motion. I have a motion by Commissioner Mueller with a second by Commissioner Wooten. Uh, all those in favor? No. Sorry. Sorry, um, Chair Lewis, Chair uh, Huhim, I will do roll call just because we do have one commissioner attending virtually. Thank you. Okay. So I will call the roll call. Carter? Aye. Huhim? Aye. Mueller? Aye. Martin? Aye. Doblinger? Aye. Wooten? Aye. Uh, motion passes. Uh, Six to zero. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your patience tonight as well. Um, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes. Uh, we're looking for approval of the January 10th, 2023 HRA board meeting minutes. Are there any questions or changes to the minutes? Hearing none, I would ask for a motion to, oh, sorry, uh, Commissioner Carter. Uh, just a quick question. Should I recuse myself since I was not on the commission at that point in time. Thank you, Commissioner Carter. Yes, you may abstain. Okay. All right. Um, could I, I, so now I would ask for a motion to approve the January 10th, 2023 HRA board meeting minutes. So moved. A second? Second. Okay. I hear a motion by Commissioner Martin and a second by Commissioner Doblinger. Um, with that, I would, oh, was it Wooten? I apologize. Commissioner Wooten. Um, could we get the roll, please? Absolutely. Thank you, Chair Huhim. Huhim? Aye. Martin? Aye. Mueller? Aye. Doblinger? Aye. Wooten? Aye. Motion passes with one abstention. Thank you. Moving on to organizational business. Item 4-1, the 2022 year-end HRA budget carryover. Could we please have the staff report? Thank you, Chair Huhim. Our uh, HRA accountant, Mary Lee, is available to provide that update on staff report for item number 4.1 and 4.2. Mary? Great. All right, the HRA board is asking and approve the reappropriation of the enclosed list of the 2022 budgeted expenditures into 2023. Um, the items listed were approved in the 2022 budget, but uh, were not expended or encumbered in 2022. So we're asking the board to approve the budget carryover. Thank you. Um, are there any questions? or comments regarding item 4.1. Seeing none, I would ask for a motion to adopt the resolution making alterations to the approved budget through the appropriation of 2022 budget expenditures to be carried over into 2023. So moved. Okay. A second? Second. Okay, it has been moved by Commissioner Wooten, seconded by Commissioner Mueller. Are th is there any discussion on this item? Hearing none, I would ask for the roll. Thank you, Carter? Aye. Huhim? Aye. Martin? Aye. Mueller? Aye. Domlinger? Aye. Wooten? Aye. Motion passes six to zero. Moving on to item, should I, I may I ask the question? Um, are we moving on to item 4.3 then, or 4.2? Okay. Um, item 4.2, tw the 2022 year end HRA budget adjustment. Could we have the staff report, please? Yep, similar to the year end HRA budget carryover, this would be uh, year end budget adjustments to uh, reflect actual 2022 revenues and expenditures of the HRA. Um, motion to adopt the resolution approving the 2022 year and budget adjustment. Thank you. Are there any questions? 
Hearing none, I will ask for a motion to adopt the resolution approving 2022 year-end budget adjustment request by the, H the Housing and Redevelopment Authority in and for the City of Bloomington. Can I hear a motion for that, please? So moved. Okay, a second? Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Doblinger, seconded by Commissioner Martin. Uh, are there, is there any discussion on this item? Hearing none, I will ask for the roll. Carter? Aye. Huheem? Aye. Martin? Aye. Mueller? Aye. Doblinger? Aye. Wooten? Aye. Motion passes six to zero. Thank you. Moving on to item 4.3, draft 2023 HRA work plan. Uh, could we please have the staff report? Thank you, Chair Huheem, uh, Erica Coleman, HRA Administrator. So in the agenda pack, the item packet I have included, uh, first to um, the 2022 HRA accomplishments. Uh, they are broken out into separate areas that identify with the work that we do as approved through the HRA assessment recommendations. And so um, just starting with our accomplishments uh, operationally, we have the annual housing report and we went through an actual HRA assessment of our organization and then uh, approved recommend recommendations to reorganize how the work is done and, and communicating and connecting uh, with the public. Um, and so focusing on uh, programs and services around the housing continuum, as well as uh, focusing on missing middle housing um, production and uh, support which is um, different types of housing that could go for more uh, affordability, and then expanding um, our buckets of offerings through housing stability, preservation, and pathways to homeownership. We also, as you know, expanded the HRA board that was successful legislation at the state, uh, where we did have to go through that process to have special legislation to expand our board and then go through the process to open it up. And now we have a full seven commissioner board. Uh, technology and software updates and the property management and maintenance for HRA owned property. These are items that uh, you did approve for us to um, in terms of more efficiency in how we do our work. And so uh, the software um, and technology is taking the HRA from operating um, mainly on paper, um, paper files and everything to using technology. So this will be a um, customer facing. So that is internal customers because our colleagues, us, as we work together, we are customers, but also external facing with our participants of our various programs and the residents. Uh, then moving into housing stability, uh, the funding that is provided through the approval of a successful grant with the Department of Employment and Economic Development, so our partnerships with CLUES and VEEP for housing assistance and food support, um, approving our special uh, special vouchers, so foster youth to independence for youth that are aging out of foster care. Um, or have aged out of foster care and may be homeless or at risk of homelessness. And then our veterans vouchers, so HUD VASH vouchers, um, working with the veterans, uh, um, the VA in Minneapolis. And then our homelessness response and prevention that was approved by this body and the uh, city council for the funding through American Rescue Plan Act dollars. Um, our public schools partnership of emergency rehousing, uh, foreclosure prevention, counseling, and assistance. This has to do with um, impacts of COVID-19, uh, loss of income that people may be behind, and then our state of homelessness assessment, uh, which is underway by an outside consultant and expected to be completed in April of this year, and we'll come back to this body. Uh, home ownership pathways, we uh, have a successful partnership for public home ownership education. So this was the offering here at Bloomington Center for the Arts uh, in, in partnership with Project for Pride and Living, better known as PPL, on November 16th, where we offered a journey to home ownership workshop that was free to the public. So just bringing that to our Bloomington uh, residents here to offer them the connection to come to Bloomington Center for the Arts Civic Plaza to learn and engage in that information. From there, uh, work with housing and home ownership and financial counselors for their individual situation. Uh, 
our down payment assistance, so Bloomington Home Buyer Mortgage Assistance Program, launching down payment assistance, which uh, is currently open and being administered by NeighborWorks Home Partners. And then this body um, at the end of last year approving us to pursue and implement the Housing Choice Voucher Home Ownership Program. Uh, so this is a Housing Choice Voucher, the program that we operate now. You can use the vouchers towards rent assistance. There is a carve out in that program to be able to use uh, those same vouchers towards home ownership. And so um, we are pursuing to implement that program after approval by a housing urban De Department of Housing and Urban Development. Then into housing preservation, uh, we this body did approve the expansion of emergency home improvement programs. So our a brush with kindness, our partnership with Habitat for Humanity for Bloomington uh, households that um, owner occupied households that do have orders or code violations that they just need just a little bit of help getting it um, completed so that they can stay in their home. And then the housing environmental loan program. This is that emergency forgivable loan that this body uh, approved increasing to $9,999 and making it more accessible to truly be used in an emergency situation. Continuing our uh, senior community services um, home and technology support expansion. This is our annual contract with senior community services. They've expanded to include technology support for seniors. Uh, this is either in the home or coming to the center to have one-on-one -on -one support. And we previously, before 2022, did not um, provide the support for technology support. So this body approved that support um, for them. And then housing creation, Noble Apartments, better known as 8200 Humboldt, uh, that did break ground. That was an old office building that now will have um, a market rate with 50% area median income units included, a 9%, 50%. And then Oxboro Heights Senior, this is 125 units, 100% affordable, which will include 30% and 50% uh, units in this project. Uh, the right-of-way loan acquisition fund, this is for five lots that the HRA is managing that are owned by the city. And so there will be more to come, but the goal is to market these lots for affordable home ownership, um, affordable home ownership and or mission based organizations uh, development. Uh, so that way it's still going to affordable or needs based uh, populations. Cadence, which is better known as 8012 Old Cedar. Uh, this is a old office building uh, was on this site located near the mall, very close to the Mall of America, where we did get six 30 percent units in this development. It did open in 2022. And then West Hennepin Affordable Housing Land Trust, who we do have um, a partnership with. They do uh, buy and rehabilitate at least two homes in Bloomington a year with funding support from us. We do have a lot that we, this body entered into a memorandum of understanding. Um, so we own a lot and we entered into an MOU with Walt to hold that lot for them to raise funds to build new construction, affordable home ownership, which is something they haven't typically done in Bloomington. And just highlighting here, they were awarded state funding for Bloomington in particular. So. Uh, those were highlights. And then continuing with our studies and special projects, just highlighting that um, uh, the Met Council highlighted Bloomington, the Opportunity Housing Ordinance, and our 2021 update that we were at 80%, 86% of our affordable housing goals by 2030. So we're very close to that. Uh, 98th Street Station Corridor Study, this is the support for this uh, study that's being led by Traffic and Engineering for the future um, the future proposed, future to look forward to a proposed multi-mixed-use um, development. So more to come on that after they finish that study. Uh, expansion of Europolis and tax increment financing used for that expansion approved by this body. Uh, the discussions and... Um, joint meetings with Planning Commission on hotel and office conversion and accessory dwelling units. 
2021, that was the first time we ever had a joint meeting with Planning Commission. Uh, so we were building on that in 2022. And then lastly, participating in the Just Deeds community event that did happen. This is about uh, discharging racially restricted covenant language on uh, properties. And then the Bloomington Pride event that we did participate in and table at in 2022. So I just want to say thank you. Uh, this is the accomplishments at a high level of this of the HRA as a whole. And so when we talk about the HRA, that includes not only this board, but the staff who are hard at work uh, day in and day out to serve our communities. Um, so next, I have the 2023 HRA work plan, and I'm bringing it forward this evening for discussion to be voted on at our annual meeting. Um, and I brought it forward now just so you can review if you have any comments, questions, and any uh, edits that we can make those additions or changes and then bring back a finalized document at our annual plan to be voted on. So as you can see, again, I broke it out according to how I broke out the uh, accomplishments. So operational, we are continuing to uh, work with other boards and commissions, expanding our partnerships, but also any uh, collaborative initiatives, equity, um, Bloomington Housing Action Team of um, making sure that we are revamping that and having participation in that, uh, working towards health and sustainability and our resilient communities, uh, return on investment analysis, partnership with the University of Minnesota, which is being led by planning. Um, housing stability, the completion of the homelessness assessment, continuing our Bloomington Public Schools partnership and continuing our foreclosure prevention counseling. Uh, there will be more information that is led by planning around the single room occupancy standards, um, looking into more housing assistance program for specific populations. There are additional programs for youth. We already have one for veterans and there are other programs for households with children um, specifically. Maintaining our rental assistance program and expanding where feasible, and then support of other assistance programs such as benefits, education, services. So this is really building off our collaboration um, and coordination of services. Homeownership pathways, expanding um, our self-sufficiency programming and education offerings for home buying, and opportunities for low to moderate income home buyer programming, as well as continuing with our down payment assistance program. Housing preservation, uh, working through our energy efficiency programming and partnerships as uh, aligns with the goals of the city and the HRA. Um, home improvement loan programs and offerings. This uh, may come back before you with just, we, we use them as living documents to look at our programs and always through a lens of equity. And so we may uh, have staff that propose some updates to that. So just keep an eye on that. And then housing maintenance and repair, continuing our partnerships with the Brush with Kindness and Senior Community Services. And then lastly, housing creation. Again, the support for 98th Street Corridor uh, study, which is continuing uh, for future redevelopment opportunities, but this is led by Public Works. Acquisition and disposition of HRA-owned property. Uh, we do have some properties that we own, but we could look at if there are other opportunities to buy property as it aligns with our mission um, of the HRA and to provide um, opportunities, it has to come back to this body. So anytime we look to purchase something or we look to sell something, we do have come back to the board. So you will always be included on that. And then in management and expansion of affordable homeownership development, this builds off of the recommendations from the HRA assessment of creating more opportunities, single family, missing middle, and then development gap assistance, which would be for trying to get the deeper affordable units in multifamily development. And with that, um, Chair Lewis has arrived. Welcome, Chair Lewis. And I can stand for any questions or discussions on the 2023 proposed work right. plan. Are there any uh, questions for Administrator Coleman? Uh, yes. <laughs> Commissioner Martin, sorry. Perfect. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, Administrator, i just curious, uh, especially with the state of homelessness assessment, I've got to imagine that there's a lot of suburban communities that are going to find themselves in the same place, uh, especially with the, the major findings, at least. I'm just wondering, is it something we could work into the work plan here or just working with our outreach and engagement division, I guess whoever it may be, to communicate these findings to surrounding communities? Um, yeah, I'm sure it's, it's information everybody would find valuable. 
Thank you, Chair Lewis, Commissioner Martin. Absolutely. That is, um, I would say that's a part of our communications and um, I don't want to say marketing, but that's really what that is of really making sure the information is reaching our community um, and then looking at if there are recommendations and what we would like to move forward in doing, making sure we're communicating that as we go. So, yes. Thank you. Are there any other questions for Administrator Coleman? Commissioner Hukim. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to first say thank you for the work. Um, I made a comment earlier that looking at 2022, it was really interesting and exciting to see just how much work we actually did get done. Um, I don't think we realize it sometimes when we're sitting back behind these microphones. Um, but I wanted to ask on when we talked about, because we, we were, we met with the planning commission and we talked about like cluster housing and things like that. Um, is there something in the work plan for like those type of discussions to continue happening and those going forward? Um, I'd really like to see more opportunities and more creativity in housing besides just our standard way of thinking of apartment complexes or, you know, duplexes and things like that. So I'm just kind of wondering if we can somehow get a creative balance in there um, in our work plan. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Lewis, Commissioner Huheem. I can definitely uh, look at that and maybe call that out a little differently um, between our um, op coordination with boards and commissions around continuum of housing. That would be under that operational piece. Um, but I can look at that and come back with maybe more clear um, identification of that. Thank you, Administrator Coleman. Are there any other questions for uh, Administrator Coleman? Um, hearing none, I'd like to thank you for that really good rough draft of the work plan for 2023. It's going to be great at our annual meeting. Thank you. Um, moving on to um, item 4.4, grant agreements with Bridging Housing Links Oasis for Youth and VEEP. May we have your staff report, please? Thank you, Chair Lewis. Uh, so annually, the HRA includes general administrative support of $10,000 each to four local nonprofits. Uh, these organizations further the HRA's mission of providing affordable housing opportunities for individuals who are not adequately served by the marketplace. And so um, what I did in this packet, and I won't go through every last one, but I provided more information about each organization. So Bridging, uh, Bridging actually provides quality furniture and household goods for those pursuing housing stability. Uh, so we support them, but we also are going to become a referral agency ourselves, so that our participants who are coming in don't have to find another referral agency. We, our staff here in the HRA can actually refer them. Housing Link um, is an online platform, but they connect people to affordable rental homes, increasing choice and access for all. Uh, Housing Link is a great organization that uh, you can go on there to find affordable rentals throughout the state, actually, but specifically in Bloomington. And if you have um, a uh, housing choice voucher or not, it helps you query that. So uh, that's a good support for them. And then Oasis for Youth. Oasis for Youth is um, committed to elevating youth in our community. So Oasis for Youth is really good on whether it is uh, needs of youth, but also housing needs for youth um, and youth that may be at risk of homelessness or experiencing homelessness. Oasis for Youth does provide support and help. And then Veep. Uh, Veep, we, uh, they have a food shelf, they have supportive services, they have housing assistance and uh, stability of services, and so in supporting uh, Veep. So these organizations, like I said, help further our mission to help those not adequately served by the marketplace. And I would be looking for approval of the resolution that authorizes me to execute agreements with each of these organizations. Thank Can you. I ask a question? Yes, I was just going to open it up for. Okay, sorry. So, thank you, Administrator Coleman and Administ and Commissioner um, Mueller. You had a question. Um, I was wondering, for how many years has it been ten thousand? Yeah. And with the way everything is increased, right. do they need? Can we do more or? Thank you, Chair Lewis and Commissioner Mueller. That's a great question. It's been $10,000 for one year. Oh. Uh, be prior to 2022, it was $5,000 for quite a few years. Along that same discussion. Uh, yes. 
Commissioner, and I'm getting used to names, um, Commissioner Wooten. Wooten. Along that, same, along that same discussion line, it's been changed over the last year. Is there any discussion around future uh, increases or future um, assessments due in part to the challenges these organizations are having for capacity um, as well as, unfortunately, the cost of living? Yes. Thank you, Chair Lewis. Commissioner Wooten, at this time we have not discussed uh, increasing over the future increasing in the future just yet, um, but we do uh, maintain uh, communication with these organizations um, and look for other ways that we can su support or um, assist in other initiatives that also work towards advancing our mission. Thank you. Are there any other? Uh, yes, um, Commissioner Martin. Uh, thank you very much. Hey, just uh, along those same, li same lines, it, it caught my eyes. Uh, for those that don't know my day job, I work for a Second Harvest Heartland, and we supply about 90% of the food that goes out through most food shelves uh, in the Twin Cities region. And I know Veep in particular is seeing 30% higher need for food assistance now than at the peak of the pandemic. Um, so I think as part of our overall budgeting process, once we jump into that for the next fiscal year, mm -hmm. I'd be interested in having that capacity conversation. Yes, I think that's a good comment. Thank you, Chair Lewis, Commissioner Martin, Commissioner Mueller, Commissioner Wooten. Uh, when we do come back with the budget, you will see a noted um, potential for increase for this activity to discuss. Thank you. Good comments. Thank you, everybody. Um, now, just moving on to what we need to do with the item now, uh, do I hear a motion? to approve the resolution approving the grant agreements between Bridging Housing Link Oasis for Youth in Veep and the Housing and Redevelopment Authority in and for the City of Bloomington. So moved. Sec Is there a second? Second. Uh, it has been moved by Commissioner Hukim with a second by Commissioner Wooten. She doesn't roll call. Roll call. Roll call. I'll do roll call. All right. Okay. Um, I do want to open it up first for any discussion. Is there any discussion before we do the roll call vote? All right. Um, may we have the roll call vote, please? Carter? Aye. Huhim? Aye. Lewis? Aye. Martin? Aye. Mueller? Aye. Doblinger? Aye. Wooten? Aye. Motion passes 7 to 0. Thank you. Um, moving on to item 4.5, grant agreement with Project for Pride in Living. May we have the staff report, please? Yes, thank you, Chair Lewis. So the HRA has a top priority of providing homeownership pathways. And one of the strongest pathways to achieving homeownership is actually centered on education. So in 2022, on November 16th, the HRA did partner with Project for Pride and Living, better known as PPL, to provide a free education workshop, which was titled uh, Renting Versus Homeownership, which was held in person here at Bloomington Center for the Arts. The workshop was successful, and residents and community stakeholders expressed interest in more offerings of such education and accessibility in different languages. PPL expressed an interest in expertise in addressing this need, and so um, PPL is actually a Twin Cities nonprofit that focuses on housing stability and career readiness, uh, with skilled counselors and a network of resource, resource referrals that works with households individually. PPL is a certified HUD counseling agency for homeownership counseling. And so the HRA would like to continue and expand our partnership with PPL into 2023, by offering courses on the journey to home ownership monthly in English, Spanish, and Somali at the Bloomington Center for the Arts, starting in February. Additionally, PPL is in partnership with financial and mortgage counselors and will have home stretch courses in English, Spanish, and Somali here in Bloomington. The mission and activities of PPL will further the authority's mission of providing affordable homeowner housing opportunities for individuals and families who are not adequately served by the marketplace. Staff is requesting approval of the attached resolution, which authorizes the administrator to ex execute the agreement with PPL for the administrative support of $25,000. We did arrive um, at this amount because it will be three courses a week, three courses a month 
for 11 months and four home stretch courses, which home stretch is an eight hour course that happens on a Saturday. Um, however, all of these courses will be free to the participants. Um, so we are also helping to support that cost that usually households pay for home stretch in particular so that they will not have to pay that. And home stretch is actually a course that is offered and required if a household is looking to uh, get down payment assistance. Um, this is actually a required certificate for them to have to be able to qualify in addition to their uh, income for down payment assistance programming. What I want to also highlight, I gave information about Project for Pride and Living, what their uh, mission, statement of equity, and their focus is. But then I also added uh, as a handout their 2022 year-end outcomes um, with NARAB. Uh, NARAB is a National Association of Real Estate Brokers. This is a uh, affinity group for black real estate professionals, um, and they're partnering with PPL to offer home stretch. And as you can see, 88% um, of the home buyers were black indigenous people or co of color. And 57% of those home buyers bought in Hennepin County alone from those that participated in 2022. And it was 309 attendees in 2022. So I can stand for any questions on this item. Are there any questions for Administrator Coleman? Hearing none. Nope. I'm sorry. Oh, yes, Commissioner Carter. Uh, thank you, Chair. I don't really have a question. I guess I just want to say um, that I'm really excited about this work and I'm very supportive. Um, you know, we talk a lot about equity and a big um, focus of our equity work is increasing access to opportunity. And this is such a great way to do it. And so I just want to Thank Ms. Coleman and her team for the wonderful work that you're doing and for bringing approaches like this to the city. And I just think it's it's really excellent. And I'm really excited to vote for this in support of it. Thank you. Commissioner Dob Doblinger. Uh, I was just wondering if there are any other languages being considered for uh, the classes. Uh, obviously, those three are very large groups, but there are other groups possibly as well. Thank you, Chair Lewis and Commissioner Doblinger. You are uh, right on point. We are considering Hmong. Good. Are there any other questions for Administrator Coleman? Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve the resolution approving the grant agreements between Project for Pride in Living and the Housing and Redevelopment Authority in and for the city of Bloomington? Motion to approve. Um, is there a second? Second. It has been um, moved by Commissioner Wooten with a second by Commissioner Martin to approve the resolution approving the grant agreements between Project for Pride in Living and the Housing and Redevelopment Authority in <coughs> and for the city of Bloomington. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, may we have the roll call vote, please? Carter? Aye. Huheem? Aye. Lewis? Aye. Martin? Aye. Mueller? Aye. Doblinger? Aye. Wooten? Aye. Motion passes 7-0. to zero. Thank you. <coughs> Moving on to item. New business. We are looking at item 5.1, the 2023 Home Program Funding Agreement with Senior Community Services. May we have the staff report, please? Thank you, Chair Lewis. Uh, so uh, annually, the uh, HRA approves funding um, from its regular budget for household and outside maintenance for the elderly program that is administered with Senior Community Services. So uh, before you is a resolution to approve the 2023 Home Program Funding Agreement with Senior Community Services for $26,000 uh, as approved in the budget for 2023. And I just want to highlight, we have two agreements with Senior Community Services, um, just so we're clear. One is between the HRA and Senior Community Services for $26,000. The other one is between um, the city through CDBG 
and senior community services for an additional twenty to twenty five thousand dollars. And these are annual um, agreements. Um, and the difference is, is that our agreement with the HRA follows our budget year, which is January 1 through December 31st. But the CDBG agreement follows the CDBG program year, which is July 1st of the previous year through June 30th of the current year. So in a few months, I will return with another agreement, but it's under CDBG. So I just wanted to highlight that um, so there's not confusion um, because we did just see this not too long ago, but this was a different agreement. Um, and then also that just a little bit more information about senior community services because we can get used to doing things annually and then not remember that we can give more information. Um, and so senior community services uh, works to innovate and deliver services that meet the changing need of older adults and their caregivers. And so they do provide services, including minor home repairs, window washing, installation of home safety and security items, leaf raking, lawn mowing, snow removal, screen and window changing, carpentry, painting, and energy conservation measures. Thank you, Administrator Coleman. Are there any questions for Administrator Coleman? Hearing none, do I hear a motion to approve the resolution approving the 2023 Home Program Funding Agreement with Senior Community Services for $26,000? So moved. Is there a second? Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Mueller with a second by Commissioner Doblinger. Um, that we approve the resolution approving the 2023 home program funding agreement with senior community services for $26,000. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, may we have the roll call vote? Yes, Carter? Aye. Huheen? Aye. Lewis? Aye. Martin? Aye. Mueller? Aye. Doblinger? Aye. Wooten? Aye. Motion passes seven to zero. Thank you. Moving on to item 5.2, um, Lindale Flats development. May we have the staff report, please? Thank you, Chair Lewis. Uh, so um, on December 4th, 2020, the HRA did enter into a development agreement with the developer, MWF Properties, and or and or their subsidiary for an affordable housing development at 9320 Lindell Avenue South in the city of Bloomington, known as Lindell Flats. This is a 100% affordable uh, complex in which we did provide tax increment financing and affordable housing trust fund for, but we also um, applied for tax-based revitalization account and environmental response fund grant funds through the Metropolitan Council and Hennepin County Environment and Energy Department, respectively. And so, in connection with those applications, they were approved by the Met Council in Hennepin County, and we did execute agreements as approved by this body for loans to the developer, so $264,100 of tax-based revitalization account funds and $172,766 of emergency response, environmental response funds to MWF. And so uh, the HRA did approve a resolution authorizing a master subordination agreement to US Bank, which was their construction loan lender for the development. Um, and so we subordinated our tax-based revitalization account ERF loans and the Lindell Flats development has been completed and opened, it is occupied, and the developer is putting its permanent financing in place with Bridgewater Investment Management and Bridgewater Bank which are their permanent financing senior lenders. And those lenders are requiring that the HRA enter into a master subordination agreement for the tax-based revitalization account and environmental response fund loans to them as the permanent finance senior lenders. And so staff is requesting approval of the attached resolution, which would authorize uh, the administrator or the chair to execute the master subordination agreement documents for them to close on their permanent financing and I can stand for any questions. Thank you, Administrator Coleman. Are there any questions for Administrator Coleman? Yes, I have. Yes, Commissioner a, Mueller. Um, a question, the Environmental Response Fund, how 
was it determined that was needed or just can you tell me a little bit about the reasons and the whys? Absolutely. Thank you for the question. Uh, thank you, Chair Lewis and Commissioner Mueller. So uh, there was contaminated soils at this site. And so there is a special um, vapor remediation, soil vapor and mitigation required. And to help with that, you can apply as a developer with um, the governmental entity, so the city or the HRA, to uh, receive those funds from the Met Council and or Hennepin County to offset those costs uh, that are incurred to be able to keep this development affordable. Um, so that is what that is for. And so it was determined based on soil testing um, and the history of the site, which I'm not quite sure what it was, but the history of the site as to how that was needed and why it was applied for and why ultimately it was approved. Thank you, Administrator Coleman. Are there any other questions? Yes, Commissioner Hukim. Thank you, Chair. Um, my And I'm, I'm pretty sure this is, I know the answer to this, but I just want to make sure. Um, since they're going to the permanent funder, would then the master subordination agreement with U.S. Bank, like, they, are they leaving U.S. Bank, will that then become void and null? Is that how that works? I just want to understand how these are working. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Chair Lewis, Commissioner Huheem. So essentially, U.S. Bank, as the construction loan lender, will be paid off in full. And so um, our loans are liens against the property. And so they do show up in title work. And so we still have a recorded mortgage against the property. So therefore, we have to subordinate to a lesser position, but we are still being identified as we are owed the funds. So yes, U.S. Bank's agreement would be satisfied, yet our agreements would not. Therefore, we're re-signing and acknowledging that in a master subordination agreement. Thank you for the additional information. Are there any other questions for Administrator Coleman? Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve the resolution approving the master subordination agreement for tax-based revitalization account and environmental response fund loans for Lindale Flats project? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Um, it has been moved by Commissioner Hukim with a second by Commissioner Doblinger to approve the resolution approving master subordination agreement for tax-based revitalization account and environment res environmental response fund loans for Lindale Flats project. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, may we have the roll call vote? Carter? Aye. Huheem? Aye. Lewis? Aye. Martin? Aye. Mueller? Aye. Doblinger? Aye. Wooten? Aye. Motion passes seven to zero. Thank you. Um, moving on to our last item tonight. Um, it's comments or questions from the commissioners. Does anyone, anyone have anything that they would like to comment on or ask? Uh, yes, Commissioner Hukim. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just really quick, uh, could you just maybe just give a little uh, rundown of what the annual meeting will look like for our new commissioners, just to have a little prep of what that is all about. Um, I just know when I had my first annual, it was a little overwhelming, so I just think a little clarification might be helpful. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Chair Lewis, Commissioner Huheem. So our annual meeting is our next meeting. Feb Tuesday, February 14th at 6 p.m. This was noticed in our Bloomington Sun Current, as well as provided to uh, commissioners, the city council, and city leadership and the mayor, uh, as required by our bylaws for this organization. And so at the annual meeting, that is an opportunity, if necessary, to update bylaws, as well as to um, go through our um, election of officers, and so uh, by, by, by our bylaws, we will ha need to have an election of officers, which is done by this board, of a chair, a vice chair, and a secretary. And so that would be a voice nomination and a voice vote by the commissioners only. Um, and we also do um, a designation of our official depositories, a designation of our official newsletter, newspaper, excuse me, and a designation of our electronic funds transfer. And then I also just bring back the 2023 uh, board meeting calendar 
just for review. Uh, we historically would not, we would wait till the annual meeting to approve the calendar, uh, which the annual meeting typically happened in March, uh, but this body elected to make sure that we enter the new year with an approved meeting calendar prior to waiting until March of the current year. I can stand for any other questions. Are there any other questions? Well, hearing none, I would look for a motion for adjournment. So moved. Is there a second? Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Hukim with a second by Commissioner Doblinger to adjourn. Um, may we have the roll call vote? Carter? Aye. Hukim? Aye. Lewis? Aye. Martin? Aye. Mueller? Aye. Doblinger? Aye. Wooten? Aye. Motion passes 7 to 0. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone.